Hey y'all, Kathy the Vegan Prepper here to talk to you all about fermentation and dehydration and why I love them so much. So this is not so much a how-to video, it's more like why. Like why should I get into that if I'm not into that already? But I also like to show off a little bit of my projects and then just so you know, there is craziness going on in this house just like always. I have been sitting in this chair trying to film this video for like three hours. If something blows up or something happens, we're just gonna keep going. So. Just so you know, it's a possibility. So let's just roll with it, okay? Because this is real life, right? And all of this is happening in real life. And you don't have to have like some calm, perfect little existence to be able to put some stuff together for your family, to prepare, to learn a new skill. It's cool. This is the kind of stuff that has been going down from time immemorial and moms from thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago who were dealing with the same junk that we're dealing with now, probably multiplied by a hundred because they didn't even have dishwashers or washing machines or whatever. But they managed to do this stuff, right? To keep food safe. And these are skills that have been passed down for forever and skills that we should have, right? So I, I just love being able to tap into the natural world, especially for things like fermentation, to create gorgeous, healthy things for my family. But all that being said, let's get right into it. So currently I am working on fermenting some garlic cloves. So I'm gonna basically peel cloves and fill this jar and then um, put a brine on top and it's gonna sit for probably about three or four weeks and then I will have fermented garlic cloves. This is my current, see right here, I'm peeling the cloves. So I know technically there's like fast quote unquote ways to do it and every single time I've tried doing those faster methods, I just get tired. So for me, I like to peel the cloves one at a time, I just put on a show and I do it, you know, and then that's what, that's the way that it gets done. Right. Um, and it's actually a little bit relaxing to me, you know, sort of just sitting there doing kind of a little mindless task and having an excuse to have a little show on, right? Like, cause I don't usually get to sit and watch TV that much. So it's great for me. Um, but expanding beyond that. So, um, fermentation is great for preserving all kinds of vegetables. Um, sauerkraut is probably one of the most famous fermentations. It's one of the ones that I do the most often. What I love about it too, with being budget friendly for sure, both fermentation and dehydration are so budget friendly, but fermentation is like even more budget friendly because you literally need absolutely no special equipment whatsoever to do fermentation. Basically all you need is a jar and you can use yourself like an old spaghetti sauce jar. Like you don't even have to have a mason jar and do your fermentations that way. Um, and then like salt. And literally that's it. Sometimes water, like I said, this is gonna be in a brine. So that's like a mixture of salt and water. But for cabbage, all you do is salt and you just kind of squeeze it until the brine comes out of, it releases its own juices. And then you pack the cabbage down in a jar and then the juice rises to the top and you weight it down somehow. Anyway, so you can get details elsewhere. Girl, this video is gonna get like so long if I talk about all the details. But this is what I'm saying, like it's such an easy, it's a really easy process. Then you just let it sit for like a week and then you have sauerkraut. It's rich in probiotic, rich in vitamin K, rich in vitamin C, which has to be probably my number one reason for thinking that fermentation is an incredibly important skill to have especially thinking of long-term food storage as a vegan. So fermented vegetables can be stored in the fridge for months and months and months. And then even not stored in the fridge, they will last for months if they're kept in a very cool space. So again, you have to look up the specifics on the safety of that, but it's really, really awesome <laughs> the way that they'll keep for a really long time. So it is a preserved food that is rich in vitamin C which is not something that can be said for dehydration or for canning. Now it can be said a little bit for frozen fruits and vegetables, but if you're looking for, you know, a long-term food storage that you can do that does not require power to keep up, or if you are in an area where you occasionally lose power, because I know that there are people who will lose power and then they lose every single thing that they have in their freezer, right? And if that's kind of where you are, then, you might like to consider something like fermentation as a long-term food storage for your um, fresh foods to keep the vitamin C viable. And that's an incredibly important nutrient for everyone, but especially for vegans, because we consume non-heme iron 
and the vitamin C makes the iron like three times more absorbable, which makes it then comparable, if not more absorbable than heme iron, which comes from animal sources. Sorry, I'm trying to keep everything straight, okay? <clears throat> so it's been a really long time I've been sitting here saying all this stuff. So <laughs> vitamin C is really important, which is why I think that fermentation is, is something that I will never stop doing. And in fact, I'm constantly beginning to do more and more and more of that to keep that nutrient available for us. But as another kind of longer term storage thing, vitamin C, um, rose hips are very rich in vitamin C and camu camu powder as well. Those are both natural things that store in their dried form and have vitamin C very richly in them. So you can look into that for some of your own preps and storage and whatnot. But fermentation is not just about vegetables. It's also about some of the things that we really enjoy. I know some people make wine, some people make their own liquor. Um, I don't really do that, but I have begun to make my own apple cider vinegar, which is a fermented product. Um, and it, this is, look, can you see the bubbles? You can see those bubbles. Ah, like it's just like, like it feels like magic to me every single time. I love it. Um, and it's basically taking something that you would normally just throw away, right? Your apple cores, maybe apple peels if you make a pie. But for us, it's mainly our cores. And then if you see like the pretty slices, it's because I slice apples for my daughter and then she just like leaves them and doesn't eat them until they get kind of brown and nobody wants to eat them. But that's when they're actually kind of perfect for making vinegar out of. Um, and so you can look up the process for apple cider vinegar. In fact, I'll put a link down below to one of my absolute favorite channels and videos all about how to make your own apple cider vinegar. And then once these apples are done, so it sits for about a month like this, I just covered it in water and then inoculated it with a little bit of raw apple cider vinegar I already had on hand. Um, and then it becomes a culture. And once this is done, I'll strain the apples <clears throat> and then it will sit without the apples in it for like another month to become the actual vinegar. But these apples can go in and they're inoculated already. They can make one more batch. So it's like basically free homemade organic apple cider vinegar if you're using organic apples, which I would recommend because they're dirty dozen. You know, even budget wise, you can get yourself a couple of apples to make a big batch of apple cider vinegar, especially considering organic apple cider vinegar could be like $6 a bottle, like it's crazy. So um, this is a great thing to have, but especially just like something that you were already gonna get rid of, like you were just gonna compost that, like turn it into vinegar instead, like that is so cool. And one of these days, I am really excited about being able to start then making my own herbal preparations from these vinegars. So there's even like medicinal preparations that you can make with apple cider vinegar. Um, and then this sets you up to be able to do that for yourself without having to rely on store-bought vinegar. And again, it's one of those things where you, you know, I might not ever stop actually buying apple cider vinegar. Um, it does store very well. Like, I wanna say it's one of the things that keeps almost indefinitely. Like you could leave it in your cupboard for like 10 or 20 years and it still will be good, I think. Do research, don't quote me on that. I'm pretty sure that's one of the things though. But knowing how to make it yourself is also, I think, incredibly important. Um, and so yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and start having apple cider vinegar going all the time and then maybe eventually I won't have to buy it myself anymore. I just think that's super cool. But yes, there are certain herbs whose medicinal properties are best extracted in vinegar. Um, and that's just like a really cool idea to me to be able to make it almost entirely from something that I have made myself, just, you know, being as self-reliant as possible. Um, and then this is one of my absolute favorite vinegar herbal preparations, which I did not make with my own apple cider vinegar, but I just have here to show you. Um, it is an oxymel, which is a, an, like herbs put into a mixture of apple cider vinegar and honey. And when I do these, I, I really do recommend that you mix the vinegar and honey together first and then put the herbs in because trying to mix the honey in with the herbs is just like a mess. But this is one of my favorite recipes and I'll put it up to the camera. I don't know if it will focus on that. There it goes. It's the elderberry rose hip oxymel. So yeah, you see it's one part elderberry, one part rosehip 
I don't know why it is not. Can you just like focus? It's just, it just wants me. Sorry. It just wants me. It doesn't want this. The one part elderberry, one part rose hip, two parts apple cider vinegar, and two parts honey. I mean, you let that sit for like six weeks. This is like another two weeks to go before it's ready. Oh my gosh, I want it so bad. It tastes so, I, you have no idea how good this is. This is so delicious. I love mixing just a little bit into my water and it tastes like a, like a tart juice, almost like a cherry juice or something. But uh, rose hips are very high in vitamin C. Um, elderberry is very famous immune tonic. And I, I like to drink a little bit of that every single day as my immune boosting tonic. Um, elderberry syrup is also very popular, of course, uh, but I'm beginning to really love the Oxymel. Like, I love the tartness. I'm, I'm beginning to really love that flavor, probably because I've been fermenting so much. Uh, but yeah, it's just, just a really quick overview of fermentation. Um, and yes, I definitely will be making some more in-depth videos showing exactly how I do certain things, but that's not this one. Uh, this is just to sort of like get your wheels turning in case they hadn't yet. Uh, but let's move on to dehydration. Um, so just yesterday, my husband and I emptied the dehydrator. Um, and this isn't even all this. I made like three quarts of dried bananas. It was a huge amount of bananas that I filled our 12 trays of my Nesco dehydrator just with sliced bananas, which you dip in lemon juice so they don't turn too brown. Although some of these did turn kind of brown, but I think it might be because they were kind of overripe. But you end up with dried fruit. <laughs> that tastes like candy. So it becomes a great sweet treat that is not, you know, processed and not like overly sugared up or whatever. So there's definitely still kind of a high sugar content here, but it's coming complete with the nutrients and the fiber. Um, you know, obviously not the vitamin C cause that goes away when you dehydrate, but you know, there's still plenty of goodness here. And this is definitely far preferable to something like candy. Um, and my little two year old daughter loves to eat dried fruit in almost any form. So this is something I feel good about giving her. I made it myself. It doesn't have extra ingredients. Like I said, it's just sliced bananas and lemon juice and water, and then a whole lot of time in a dehydrator. And yeah, picking them off the trays is not always fun, but you know, you end up with a lot. And it's just a fantastic thing. Uh, Long-term food storage is great. Um, if you live in an area that is not as dry as my area, you might wanna go ahead and do some desiccant packs or oxygen absorbers. I wanna get some oxygen absorbers myself and probably start storing certain dehydrated foods in mylar bags for really long-term storage. But dehydrated foods, and not just like as a snack in and of themselves, cause like you can just eat this as is. You don't have to rehydrate it, but it's great for like, um, oh my gosh, it's so good. It's great for, you know, like oatmeal, camping or something. It'll rehydrate into whatever food you use. So I have a whole bunch of dehydrated blueberries for that purpose. And probably the next thing I'm putting into my dehydrator is a bunch of sliced strawberries from Costco because I bought two giant things of strawberries for my family because usually they just go through the strawberries like crazy, but they haven't eaten like any of the strawberries. And every single one of those strawberries is kind of starting to like, it's like just, just about to start going bad. So that's a good time to either make a jam or dehydrate or freeze or whatever. And so for me personally, this time around, I think I'm gonna go ahead and dehydrate all of those strawberries. So it's great, like the dehydrating especially and then canning too kind of but i'm not really talking about canning right now but dehydrating is great for food preservation especially like in situations like that where you're like yeah you should probably go ahead and use this up and it was already on its way to kind of starting to be dried up and dehydrated just go ahead and finish the process and then throw it in a jar and then when it gets rehydrated you just pretty much will never know so these things are great and again for like snacks but for oatmeals or trail mixes or whatever. So there's a whole universe of dehydrated food and things that you can do with dehydrated food. It's just great to explore. But one of the things that I have not heard a lot of people talk about that I really want to talk about, especially as a vegan, is dehydrated beans. So these are chickpeas, which I cooked in my pressure cooker, and then I dehydrated them. So 
beans that have been cooked on a stove don't dehydrate and rehydrate very well. But if you cook them in a pressure cooker, they rehydrate like to where you can't even tell that they were ever dehydrated. And I've seen that before. So these will rehydrate in a dish. And it's like you're just eating a chickpea that came out of a can. Like it's, it's kind of weird actually how well it comes right back. But the great thing about it too is you can just eat it. So they've been cooked and dehydrated. And it's like a little crunchy snack. Um, but what I love about that for kind of a long-term food storage situation is if you want to store a whole bunch of beans, that's great. But if you're in some situation where you don't really have power, you don't have a lot of water, um, or you're trying to conserve your water, cooking beans is not a good use of resources, you know? So for me, I think I'm going to be focusing a lot on either canned beans or beans that I have cooked in the pressure cooker and then dehydrated. Because again, they rehydrate very readily. Within 20 or 30 minutes, they come right back to the texture that they were when they were first, you know, first cooked. Um, and, but specifically again, pressure cooked beans. Um, it's important <laughs> you have an instant pot. That's what I did. I did it in the instant pot. Um, and then you'll have a store of food. Then say you don't want to use any water on it. Then just go ahead and crunch it. And this is still a great source of protein and iron and all kinds of goodness, um, combined with some fermented like sauerkraut or something. And you got your vitamin C and now you're going to get all that iron, you know, so this is a great thing, I think, for food storage that not many people have talked about because it's like, it's all well and good to have all this stuff stored up, but what if you don't have any way of cooking it? So it's a very multifaceted thing, honestly, um, when you're prepping, you're kind of prepping for multiple situations, but I am definitely, or, you know, multiple kind of eventualities or um, scenarios. There's the word I was looking for. Um, but for me, I definitely am focusing a lot of my prep work into stuff like that, which is easily usable in its form without having to do anything else. Um, and so what I also really love about these, and I, I have some rice that I've done the same thing to cooked and you don't have to cook the rice in a pressure cooker. You just do it regular, but, um, cook the rice, dehydrate it. You can put those together. And what I love to do is when I'm testing it anyway, and then probably like when we, when we go camping or like in some situation, a tip that I got from Fairyland Cottage, which is one of my favorite YouTube channels. Um, it's just, just fantastic. You should check her out. She's, um, Irish and just all her videos are so beautiful and wonderful to watch, but Fairyland Cottage, um, she does her every single day. She takes her boiled water and she puts it into like a double wall thermos so that the water stays hot inside the thermos and she doesn't have to use her electricity to heat her kettle over and over and over again throughout the day. She just has hot water ready to go. And that was something that went bing, like in my little prepper brain to have the double walled stainless steel, um, bottles, like the ones that keep water hot for forever or cold for forever or whatever, the insulated ones. Um, and so what you could do is boil your water only one time, right? If you're wanting to conserve your fuel, boil the water. It only has to get boiled one time and then store it in one of those containers. But then also what you could do is possibly use the container to rehydrate some foods. Um, and then it would take maybe less time or maybe it would take the same amount of time. Either way, you could do it without maintaining a constant heat under the water, I guess is what my point is. So you could just put the stuff in that thing, close it up, and then that becomes kind of like your instant rehydrating and heating tool. Um, so I'm gonna try that. We're gonna try that for camping for sure. And if we don't get to go camping anytime soon, then we're gonna be trying that for some backyard meals. <clears throat> and I will let you guys know how that goes because I have a theory that that's gonna work really well. So I'm gonna try that out. But I just thought I'd throw that tidbit out there for you just in case you wanna go ahead and try it. But anyway, yeah, so fermentation, dehydration, um, fantastic ways of preserving food. And then, oh, for the dehydration, I didn't mention the budget friendly part of it. Um, I will go ahead and do that really fast right now. My dehydrator, actually both of my dehydrators, I bought used. The first one I bought for $27. The second one I bought just in April for $20 after the first one broke. It served me well for many years, it broke. And then I went and just bought the same kind of dehydrator on Facebook Marketplace and got that. And with some of the extra trays that I had gotten, 
I now have 12 trays in a Nesco dehydrator and I got it for $20 and I just used my leftover trays and it works just fine. So you can find usually on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, you can find dehydrators. You don't have to spend a ton of money on a dehydrator. So that is also a great place to start budget wise if you want to um, get into that. Um, you can do it probably for very cheap, especially, you know, depending on where you live. Um, but even if you don't have access to really cheap used dehydrators, something like the Nesco, like All American Harvest or whatever, it's about $70 to get one, which is um, more expensive, of course, but it isn't like astronomically out there. Like some dehydrators are like $350 or whatever. And then let's not talk about freeze dryers, which are like $3,500 or something. So it can get really expensive, but there are definitely ways to do it on the cheap. And that is what I really wanted to share with you today. So I guess, thank you for joining me. Thanks for looking at my projects. If you have any more questions or any questions at all, put them down below and I'd be happy to answer them. I'm so happy to get to the end of this video and we're going to call it, we're just calling it a wrap. Like, I just feel like I want to kick my feet back and drink a little drink or something and just like rest and be done because oh my gosh this video was a struggle okay but that's it that's all <laughs> you know we just keep moving forward no matter what adapt and overcome right so anyway i guess that's all like i said if you have questions let me know like and subscribe just you know, show us support any way you can. And definitely uh, let me know down in the comments below if there's anything in particular that you want me to get out first. I am working on increasing the quality of these videos like you would not believe, including today, brand new star is my tripod with the light. I have the super official ring light in my eyeballs because I've got the ring light going and I'm very proud and happy to have that great lighting situation. And yeah, so pretty soon we're going to be doing video editing as well. It's going to be real. Oh man. I'll be able to like, there'd be like some scream in the background and I get to just talk and then like edit it out. Oh my gosh. It's going to be a dream. Okay. Anyway, that's all for real. It's really for real all. I just love talking to you guys so much. I don't like saying goodbye. All right. As always, I hope the rest of your day is good and your life stays wonderful. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.